Hello there, and thanks for joining me, Nicola Hume, for Phil Spencer's new guide on knowing how to view a rental property. Finding a place to rent can be competitive, so you might feel rushed into a hurried viewing. But much like buying, when you view a rental for the first time, you're checking out to see whether it's a place you'll feel at home, and you need to maximize your viewing appointment. So let's get into Phil's top tips. By the way, you'll find all kinds of useful advice for renters on the Move IQ website, so make sure you check that out. Number one, take someone with you. Not only is this a good idea from a safety point of view, but while you're busy trying to picture yourself living there, another pair of eyes may spot things that you miss. And take pictures. Photos are great memory prompts, especially if you're viewing a few places. Next, look closely at the condition of the building. Of course, you won't be responsible for the maintenance, but if the gutters or drains are blocked or the exterior looks tatty and damp, this could be an indication that the property isn't well cared for and you may struggle to get the landlord to attend to problems. Try and do both a day and an evening visit. You'll be amazed at how noisy a quiet street can be when the shops are open and the schools kick out. If you'll be bringing pets, you need to know that the house and garden are pet friendly and secure. If there is a garden, who is responsible for maintaining it? My next tip is to find out about the additional costs. Will you be paying council tax, for instance? And how much is that? What's the energy rating of the property? Check that all the fittings are working, including lights, water pressure and cooker. Run the taps to see the sinks and the baths drain easily. Are there carbon monoxide detectors and smoke alarms on each floor? Floor, ask for the heating to be turned on. Anything that's not working, specify that you'd like it to be fixed before you move in. Especially if it's a ground floor flat, you'll want locks on all of the windows as well as a mortise on the front door. You don't want to pay to have these upgraded, so ask if they're not up to scratch. If the property is above ground level, what's the fire escape plan? Then get into the details of living there. Can you redecorate? Will your furniture fit? How much more might you have to buy to live comfortably? Is there enough storage for all of your stuff? Take a tape measure and have a note of all the dimensions of anything that you want to bring with you. Ask about the neighbors. Are they also tenants or owner occupiers? Find out about public transport. And if you've got a car, what's the parking situation? If it's a shared flat or a house of multiple occupation, meaning you'll have an individual tenancy but share common areas with others, arrange your viewing for when most other tenants are likely to be home. You need to feel comfortable with the people that you're sharing a home with. And don't forget to check out the surrounding area and the state of the neighboring properties. It's all a lot to remember, I know. So to help you, you'll find a handy free rental viewing checklist to download on the Move IQ website. Having made the most of the first viewing, a second viewing is ideal, but it's also important to act quickly and decisively. If you like the property on the first viewing, let the agent or the landlord know that you're definitely interested because good properties go quickly. Assure them that you want to come back at a different time to get a full final picture. Make sure you have all of your paperwork in order, references, bank statements, etc., and that you have the deposit money already set aside. Tell the agent or the landlord that you're all organized and ready to get the ball rolling. So I hope these tips help you find the perfect rental place for you and do join me again next time for more top advice for tenants.